Welcome. Today I want to discuss the theology of James Cone, who was the founder of Black Liberation Theology. Um, he's also a man whom I would consider to be the most significant American theologian, if not of all time, at least in recent memory. Um, now, in these five minutes or thereabouts, um, there's no illusion that I'm going to be able to capture all of Cone's multifaceted theology into a single video. Um, this is no replacement for reading him for yourself. In fact, my hope is that by introducing you to some of his ideas, you will be encouraged to then go and read James Cone for yourself. Um, and so with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first point about Cone and his theology is to emphasize that he contextualizes theology to meet the actual situation um, of the poor and oppressed. Um, more specifically, Cone wanted to answer the question, what does theology mean in a world of white supremacy and racial injustice? Um, we often wrongly assume that the goal of theology is to establish a set of universally valid ideas for all people in all time, but that is an error. Instead, all of theology is already contextual theology, whether or not we admit that. Um, so the brilliance of Cohn's work is recognizing the contextual dimensions of Christian theology and taking them seriously for his own environment. Um, so all theology is contextual. It is never apolitical or colorblind because it is bound to actual human conditions. God doesn't write theology. Human beings write theology. So theology is always going to be bound to its human limitations. Um, and within that, there is what Cohn is trying to do is he's trying to dispel the myth that theology is ever going to be apolitical. In fact, all of the all theology is political language. And Core's insight um, is that theology is either written from the perspective of perspective of the oppressor or from the oppressed. That is, it either up, upholds an oppressive status quo, or it um, empowers those to struggle against the status quo and fight for justice. That is, either it is a white theology that upholds the, um, uh, the sin of white supremacy, or it is a black theology that gives a voice to the poor and oppressed um, in the black community. And so Cohn criticizes white theology and criticizes and calls the white church to rep repent of its positional allegiance to white supremacy and systemic racism. And so as a white person, it is important to reckon with the privileges I have inherited by simply being white in a world of white supremacy. I must repent of my allegiance to white supremacy um, and strive to uh, fight against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and so this this call for radical justice in the world is not a secondary commandment of the Christian gospel. It is actually essential. Christ proclaimed liberation to the, to the captives and, and good news to the oppressed. And so by contextualizing theology into the American context of uh, white supremacy, Cone's theology is a radical reproclamation of the gospel, especially it's imperative to repent. Um, now, a helpful side note, real quick, will be <clears throat> we have to realize the way Cone, the unique way Cone uses the terms white and black. And so there are two forms of whiteness and blackness in his theology. There is the ontological and the physiological. The physiological is the actual human condition of being or appearing black or white. Now, of course, race is a social construct, um, not a biological reality. So it is with this in mind that Cone refers to physical whiteness and blackness. But besides that, the more important concept for Cohn's theology is the ontological. Um, and so this is, there's an ontological blackness, um, which transcends while nonetheless being rooted in the experience of the black community in America. Um, it, this term is thus a stand-in for the status of the oppressed against their oppressors. Um, and so it is in this way that Cohn often speaks of blackness and whiteness. Um, so it is more than a designation of skin tone in this sense. And that is also why it's improper to label Cone's theology reverse racist, as some have done, because he's less concerned with actually the appearance of whiteness or blackness, and more with their, the symbolic designation of what they mean in terms of the oppressor or the oppressed. Um, and so thus it is rooted in the biblical concept of the, the oppressed and the poor, which is a strong emphasis of the Hebraic prophets. And so finally, that sets up the third point, um, which is Car uh, Cohn's quite startling and radical declaration. He says that God is black. Now, again, this does not designate a literal physical blackness, but rather it emphasizes God's um, solidarity with the oppressed. Um, to say that God is black is a symbolic subscription 
description of God rather than a literal one. God, the God revealed in Jesus Christ is the God of the oppressed, the God who sides with the poor against the rich, the weak against the strong, and the oppressed against their oppressor. Thus, when we speak of God, we must speak of God's political concern for the least of these, what Latin American theologians have called God's preferential option for the poor. In America, the, the, which is the context of Cohen's theology, this means speaking of God's solidarity with the black community who are suffering under the bondage of white supremacy. The result is this the, the result of this idea is that it moves the doctrine of God out of the realm of empty speculation and returns it to um, God's actual involvement in the historical struggle for liberation in the here and now. And so with included in this is the idea that God's love is incomplete without God's justice. God, God does not merely love us in some sentimental sense, but his love includes wrath against um all injustice um, <clears throat> and all sin, including social sins such as racism, sexism, and classism. Now, Cohen is actually building upon Maltman's development of a political theology here, which we discussed in the previous uh, video, but he takes it into the struggle of the black community who are trying to survive in a world of white supremacy. Thus, he, he asserts that the gospel itself is the proclamation of black liberation. Um, it is it is the proclamation of the dignity of blackness, reasserting that dignity in the midst of a world that so violently oppresses black bodies. And so thus the declaration that God is black is, is actually no more radical than Christ's parable of the sheep and goats, um, which identified Christ, God with the least of these and declared that God has taken up their cause as God's own. And so there's obviously so much more that we can unpack about Cohn's uh, important contribution to theology, but I hope this short video has been able to just kind of um, whet your appetite a little and get you to be a little bit more familiar with uh, James Cohn and some of his ideas. Um, I think every American should read James Cohn and his work, um, because if we are act not actively anti-racist in our proclamations, um, we will just accept the status quo as it is. But when the status quo is oppressive and violent towards the least of these, uh, then it is, an un -Christian, it is a Christian duty to um, reject the status quo and fight for a better world. And so we have to be, as Christians, we have to be on the forefront of radical change. And Cohn's work goes a long way in helping us establish a theological basis for that struggle. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. It was quite short. And the next video, I'll talk about how to read James Cohn for yourself, some of his books and, and some of the books about him. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment below if you have anything to say. But if not, hope you have a great day.